This week, we're going to take a look at an awesome beginner display from the folks at Wacom. Check it out. Hands on Tech is brought to you from LastPass Studios. Using the same password everywhere is a security nightmare waiting to happen. LastPass easily creates unique passwords for every site. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. This, this is twit. twit. This episode of Hands on Tech is brought to you by IT Pro TV. Visit itpro.tv slash twit and use code twit30 for an additional 30% off the lifetime of your active subscription. Hey folks, I'm Matt Pruitt. This is Hands on Tech at twit.tv. Hope y'all are doing well. I am unbelievable as always. And boy, I gotta tell you, I'm pretty excited to talk about this fascinating new product that came out from Wacom. All right, so if you watched our CES 2020 coverage, and I'm talking about Ants and Leo's excellent CES adventure, we talked about some of the things that were happening there and at Showstoppers, and we were able to meet up with Wacom, and they showed us this new device. It's their Wacom One tablet. All right, so let me, let me break this down for you a little bit. Wacom has a bunch of different devices out there. They have a bunch of different tablets that allow you to just manipulate images on your screen. You can write out lettering and text if you're trying to do uh, fonts and so forth. If you want to be an illustrator and, and just make little graphics, you, you can do a lot of different things on the creative side with their different devices. Some of them are pen displays. Some of them are just little tablets. If you've been watching hands-on for photography every now and then you'll catch me with a an actual Wacom tablet next to my mouse and it's just this little black plastic square but this is a little bit different this is what they call a pen display now on the pen display side of things Wacom has a couple different versions you have the Wacom one you also have the Cintiq line and on the Cintiq side of things you're going to spend a lot more money they have a, a Cintiq Pro that can run you anywhere between $1,500 up to a, maybe $2,000, depending on the different uh, accessories and uh, packages and specs and so forth of that Cintiq line, Cintiq Pro in particular. But you can step it down. I mentioned my favorite uh, tech of 2019 was the Wacom Cintiq 16. This was a step below the Pro version, but it was still a little bit more expensive than what people would like to spend at about 700 bucks. So now Wacom gives you another option, the Wacom One. They don't tag this as the Cintiq because this is not the Cintiq. The Cintiq is gonna be a little bit more on the pro side and have a little more features, but this is gonna have just as much and it's gonna be pretty daggone productive for people out there trying to get started with photo editing on a display or just doing graphic designs and animations. So who exactly is this device for? first person that comes to my mind is a, a student, a, an art student that's in, you know, doing things for animation or illustration, trying to make their own little characters and things like that. But they can't necessarily afford that Cintiq Pro line that everybody out there in Hollywood and so forth is using. This is a good option for them. Now, this is not going to be the same size as a Cintiq Pro. This is a 13 inch display versus the 16 and 22 and 24 inch that you can find on the upper echelon with the Pros. This is 13 inches, but it's also a HD screen versus a 4K screen. Now, some people are going to argue, well, I really want to have a 4K screen while I'm trying to dive into the pixels of the project that I'm working on. I get that, but I can tell you 1080p is just fine on these on this Wacom device. The Wacom one is totally fine with 1080p. Now, once you get started with this device, it's pretty simple to get it plugged up and connected and going. Uh, Wacom makes it super easy with its software download and the drivers are almost automatically installed as soon as you plug it in. And this will act as a secondary display. Right now you see I'm connected to my laptop. You can connect it to your desktop or what have you, but this is just gonna act as a second monitor on your Windows or your um, Mac machine. So if you wanna pull up Photoshop on your laptop, you can do like I do and just mirror it between the two devices. If you just want to solely put your creative uh, applications, Photoshop, Lightroom, what have you, you can just drag them on over to the Wacom One and it'll work just fine. 
This episode of Hands On Tech is brought to you by IT Pro TV. Accelerate your career or get your IT team certified. IT Pro TV's edutainers blend education and entertainment to make learning IT engaging and fun. Check out their standard and premium memberships today and you'll save 30% when you visit itpro.tv slash twit and use code twit30. That's itpro.tv slash twit and use code twit30 for an additional 30% off for the lifetime of your active subscription. IT Pro TV, build or expand your IT career and enjoy the journey. Now, using the interface on a Wacom One, the key is the stylus. This is a Wacom One stylus, and it is slightly different from that of the Cintiq line of stylus. This is what's called the Pro Pen version two, and this is just the regular stylus that comes with the Wacom One, and it's very similar to the Intuos line of stylus as uh, far as just the feel and the shape of it. The difference in the shape and feel of this is significant between the devices because with the pro version you have this extra tip and you can use it as an eraser while you're doing uh, different edits and, and processing of your creative devices here now you don't get that on the wacom one side but again you're not going to be paying quite as much for this particular stylus they both come with replaceable nibs Quite honestly, I don't really see the point in the replaceable nibs. I've had uh, this one for about two years and I haven't replaced the nib tip on it yet. Uh, I, I'm two years of use and I use it fairly regularly. I haven't worn this out, but it's nice that they offer you this extra nib tips for these devices, but I don't necessarily think you need them. Now, digging more into the specs of this, 13 inches HD display, I like that it's super light. It's only about two pounds. You get extra feet on the bottom of the display. And as you fold them out, you get about 19 degrees of tilt, which isn't bad if you're wanting to just really immerse yourself and start drawing on it. Personally, I would like to have an extra maybe, uh, maybe 10 degrees more of tilt to give me just a little bit more of a view on it. The brightness on it, uh, not quite bright enough in my opinion if you're if you're in a studio that has a lot of large windows and you're getting a lot of extra sunlight in you're going to have some challenges with with the Wacom one being bright enough now if you're totally fine with a home studio like what I have at the house it's, it's not all of that bright it's pretty dark I can see just fine on it the color correction and color accuracy on it is fair. It, you, you, they claim you're going to get up to 90% of the Adobe RGB color spectrum. I'm seeing just a little bit below that, but it's still quite workable. Again, this is a beginner device, so you're going to get a little bit of beginner specs and beginner performance. Connectivity on this uses its little proprietary USB-C connection but it also has what they call like a Hydra connection that allows one cord that splits out into three different ways. You have your HDMI out input, you have your USB to allow your pen to actually work and then speak to your computer. And you also have the power. So it's not a bunch of cables that you're having to dangle around at like you used to do with the older versions of the Cintiqs and the different tablets from Wacom. This is just one and it gives you all three in one different uh, connection here. I really enjoy that. Price point on the Wacom One is perfect for the beginner. It's perfect for that student as it comes in at $399. Now, I know a lot of people in the past when I mentioned getting themselves a, a Wacom tablet, if they're really into doing illustration and painting inside of Photoshop, they always say, hey, those things cost too much. $1,000 is just too much for me. Well, you're not paying $1,000 for this. This is well under that. And at $399, I think this is a very, very fair deal. They give you one extra bonus. I can't necessarily say I'm buying into that. And it's the ability to connect it to an Android device. In order to do that, you have to buy an extra dongle, and I've seen that vary in price range up to almost 100 bucks for the dongle, depending on where you look. I don't know if that's a use case that I want, uh, because if I have some files on my Android device that are, you know, that needs to be processed and edited, I probably have that same file available in the cloud, which means I can pull it down from the cloud and put it on my regular everyday laptop or everyday workstation and then connect my Wacom One to that and work with it. 
I highly recommend getting this Wacom One if you're just getting started in the world of, of, of post-processing on a pen display. Again, it's not going to be the Cintiq level of performance. It's not going to be the, the Cintiq level of brightness, but it is going to be a good way to get you used to being in that environment and understanding the ins and outs of what it feels like to actually draw on a pen display. If you find yourself struggling a little bit with the interface between going into Photoshop and Lightroom and using all these shortcuts, some people like to use the keyboard like this and work with it. That's what I do. But you can also get an express key remote that has all of those little shortcuts that you can build in and just sort of hold it next to it and do what you need to do. Nice little extra tip. Nice little device from the folks at Wacom. All right, so that's it. That's the Wacom One. Beautiful pricing, $399. I appreciate you folks joining us this week on Hands On Tech. Be sure to give me a follow and check me out at Hands On Photography. So just go to twit.tv slash hop and check out all of the shows that we've produced over there in the wonderful world of photography. And we're just going to share different tips and tricks to help you be a better photographer. And also, make sure you complete our annual Twit listener survey. So in your browser, type in twit.to slash survey20 and complete our survey. Go ahead and check that out. We want to know exactly what you guys are thinking about the shows so we can try to tailor our content to fit more of what you're looking for and more of the preferences that you like. And that way you can share more and more content from twit.tv with all of your friends and family and just continue to grow this beautiful Twit army. Thank you all so much. We will catch you next week on Hands On Tech. Take care. Keep up with all the hottest tech news and gadgets. Visit twit.tv. There you'll be able to find and subscribe to all our tech shows. Thanks for watching Hands on Tech.